Okay, well, we already mentioned that the continental margins are the submerged edges of the continents. Um, they may be classified, the edge of the continents, may be classified as either active continental margins or passive continental margins. And it really has to do with whether the continental margin itself is tectonically active or the, simply is a passive rider upon an oceanic plate. And we'll take a look at that uh, in just a few minutes. The continental margins have really a great number of fascinating features to them. Um, it's really where we spend most of our time and it's where we're closest to. It's an area that's rich with different kinds of resources, both uh, geologic resources as well as uh, living resources. And it's really home to some just fascinating and interesting organisms. And it's one of the places, of course, that gave rise to the Monterey Bay uh, Aquarium. And we'll talk about that in just a second here. If we take a very close look and we kind of went through some of this just a moment ago. If we take a close look at a passive continental margin, it looks something like this. We have the continental shelf. This is the narrowly sloping region, submerged edge of the continent. And this is where you stand when you're in the water at the beach. You're standing right upon the continental shelf. As you go further out, it suddenly descends quite steeply. That's defined as the continental slope. And really, this is the very edge of the continent. And this is really where you find that transition between, ocean, between continental crust and oceanic crust. So if you want to think of the continents as being like ice cubes, then this is the side of the ice cube, which is the continental slope. This very gently then sloping region right off of the continental slope is the continental rise. And this is where we see large accumulations of sediments. Sometimes we even see them in the shape of abyssal fans. And if you've ever been traveling out in the desert, you can see a similar type of feature. As sediments uh, come off of a mountain, form this kind of fan-like feature and this fan-like deposit. And then as we go further out, we're in the deep sea floor. Note one other important feature, and that is what's called a submarine canyon. And the best example near us is the Monterey Bay Submarine Canyon. In fact, the Monterey Bay Submarine Canyon is larger than the Grand Canyon. So if you've ever stood and looked across the Grand Canyon, imagine it filled up with water. That's what the Monterey Bay Submarine Canyon would look like. And submarine canyons form as sediments pile up on the continental shelf and begin to flow downwards. And they don't flow steadily, but they flow much like mudslides, much like you would see during a series of storms in Southern California, such as we get in Laguna Beach in that region, Malibu in that region. These very destructive mudslides called turbidity currents, and we'll talk about that in a second, cut out these submarine canyons, these very deep canyons cutting across the continental shelf. And it's the delivery of sediments from rivers that generally drive the formation of these submarine canyons. Let's take a closer look at oceanic ridges. As I mentioned earlier, more than 49,000, I said 40,000 miles of continuous underwater mountain range it really is part of the feature that divides Earth's crust into those dozen or so tectonic plates. And they also exhibit a number of fascinating features. If you think about our own local mountains, it will give you some sense of, at least, the oceanic ridges. If you look across the San Gabriel, San Bernardino Mountains, and again, imagine them underwater. This is a kind of landscape that you would see where we were able to drain the ocean and peer across it, or if we could walk across the bottom of the ocean. And here we have that underwater system. And you can see as well that they define at least one of the boundaries of the plates and we know that that's a divergent boundary. This is where new seafloor is formed in the process of seafloor spreading. And it's really what adds to the crust of the Earth. Well, let's take a quick tour of another feature. And that is 
the Oceanic Trench. And you can download this from NOAA. And let's just go underwater. There's the Philippines. Of course, it's not this clear. And there would be lots of fishes. And here we're coming on the very deepest part of the Mariana Trench. The Challenger Deep, named after the HMS Challenger. One of the very early expeditions to explore the world ocean. Okay, so you can download that yourself. If we look at the ocean basins, as I said before, they make up 60 to 70 percent of the entire seafloor and really over half of the area of the surface of our Earth. So they really are one of the most common features on our planet. And if we kind of, again, this is a little bit different picture of a different sort of contrast of what uh, is in the back of your book or of the bathymetric map, concentrate on these purple areas. And what we see is that ocean basins really make up a large portion of the seafloor and are really the most common part of the seafloor. So if we're looking for that feature that is the most prominent and pronounced and looking to see how these different ocean features give rise to different processes, ocean basins are going to be one of the most common. And so if we think about, again, organisms or the kinds of environments that they create, this is going to be by far the, the most abundant type of environment or habitat. Of course, it also tends to be the least studied because it's the deepest.